We also follow the basic principles of having a high security, high scalable systems. So the way that as we speak today, our platforms are very, very scalable. It has been benchmarked for 5,000 transactions per second. Leadership team, we have, and it's a new leadership. It comes with a plenty of experiences in various fields, be it sales, be it operations, be it delivery, be it marketing, or be it you know, running the organizations. Welcome to another insightful interview on our YouTube channel. Today, we have the privilege of sitting down with a true visionary in the world of banking and payments. Please meet Mr. Rajesh Lodhe, a dynamic entrepreneur and co-founder at FiCommerce. Rajesh's extensive experience in the payment domain spanning various card products and his remarkable leadership skills have paved the way for innovative solutions that are shaping the industry. So welcome to Mobile App Daily today. Thank you, Ankita. Thank you. Okay. When in your entrepreneurial journey, you realize that there is a market demand for a platform like FiCommerce? Uh, so Ankita, let me uh, uh, take you back uh, probably, you know, 10 years uh, from now. Uh, this particular, you know, decision of, you know, uh, building a specific platform which we have running now uh, as part of our business, uh, as part of our uh, overall journey of 20 years uh, in the past, what we observed is, you know, uh, there are so many frictions which are there as part of the, the payment processing. And of course, based on whatever we have seen in the uh, in our experiences, we have realized that, you know, uh, there are various types of payments which has been processed by various organizations, be it banks, be it enterprises, be it uh, the large uh, the group of companies. Mm -hmm. uh, the various payments were being processed by various different, different systems. Mm -hmm. And it has become a, a, a big problem to handle the uh, multiple channels and multiple payment options. And it has been seen by us throughout our you know, two decades of experience in the industry. Right. Why do we did that? Uh, of course, we were actually into an uh, employment that time. Mm -hmm. But when we started FiCommerce as the, as the company and the business, we said that, you know, hey, let's not do something which has been done by somebody else. Mm -hmm. Let's create something or build something which will be ready for future. Mm -hmm. And if you see today, whatever product we have built in 2015, 2016, uh, last seven to eight years, we have seen a clear cut demand of the product which we have built in 2016, 2017, mm -hmm. only because the leg legacy platforms which were there as part of the, the previous era of payments, right. it has become very difficult for the organizations to maintain that and the, to actually operate uh, within that because of the various demands which are coming from the customers, specifically end consumers, where you know the consumer expect uh, the payment experience has to be seamless. Right. And if you see the the product that we have built, it is not which has happened because there is a demand. We we actually seen this before we started the five commerce journey, and that's how we started five commerce and built this particular platform. All right. Okay. Now, uh, where is this payment landscape uh, heading in India? Is uh, UPI penetration reaching a plateau or, you know, is there a continuous growth of new UPI us uh, users across tier two and tier three cities? Like, how is this impacting your business? Okay. So, uh, Ankita, uh, it's a very good question. And I think uh, everybody in the country, in fact, everybody in the world has uh, this question of saying that whether UPI has reached its peak right. and after that there's nothing happening. Hmm. Uh, let me tell you based on our experience, right, uh, as far as one we have seen industry, it is just a tip of the iceberg. Okay. So whatever we have seen in last three to four years in terms of digital penetration in India, mm -hmm. it is just a tip of an iceberg and then you will see at least 10 times more growth in the next couple of years. And this is something which the, uh, it is not about, you know, what I feel, but this is what we have started seeing the trends in terms of the multiple multifold growth, not only in UPI, I mean, UPI is definitely uh, a leading the way. Mm -hmm. But as far as the other payment modes are concerned, so let's talk about uh, uh, during the COVID-19. I mean, this is the time where we actually started realizing that there has to be something which is contactless. Right. 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 So during COVID-19, people were afraid of, you know, touching anything which is there in the, you know, uh, around us. Yes. So 
So let's talk about contactless payments, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you see this QR, I mean, which you are seeing, it, I mean, every, every, every country in the world has tried making QR as a successful payment option. Mm -hmm. Very few companies, very few countries actually could do that. But India has actually taken an opportunity, which definitely was not a good time for the country as far as COVID-19 is concerned. Right. But that's the time where actually digitalization has actually picked up. Now, during those times that if you don't want to touch something, right? Mm -hmm. And if you have something like QR code or you have something like, you know, contactless payment, everybody has quickly adopted that. Right. Becomes easy. And that, that, yeah, that is one of the factors. Another factor is the demonetization, which has happened in 2016. Right. That is another thing which has actually helped India to grow as fast as, you know, we are seeing it. Right. Now, coming back to UPI. You must have started realizing that it's not about only an instant instant payment which is going through the uh, account of a consumer but now npca and the government has started actually adding multiple other options such as credit card on upi mm -hmm. it means that it is going to grow multifold. the the latest information what i have if today we are doing x number of transactions on a monthly basis in next couple of years you will see at least 10 times that and of course as far as five commerce is concerned of course it is going to help us right we being and we, we we being an rbi regulated payment aggregator mm -hmm. and the probably the only only channel payment platform in this country as we process all type of payments all type of payment modes right. upi is one of the most important uh, the payment option which will keep processing today also we are one of the largest payment aggregator as far as upi is concerned right. And we want to actually, you know, be part of this growth strategy as far as the India is concerned. And of course, along with that, we also would like to take this outside country with our international expansion. Right. Okay. So uh, what is the technological foundation of your payment platform and uh, how secure it is? The team of Five Commerce who has spent, you know, more than 15 years of our lives into building the payment platforms in our past experiences, uh, be it building the acquiring systems, be it building the issuing systems, be it uh, the 3D secure, be it, you know, security related products, which are around the payments is something which has been our forte uh, in the past. Mm -hmm. We have actually worked on the various geographies, starting from uh, Southeast Asia to the Latin America in the multiple countries. Right. We come from that kind of background. We have always believed in building the platforms which are scalable, high secured, and as well as, you know, ensure that we don't spend much money to build those platforms. So that philosophy was always there as part of our five commerce journey as well. So what we do, uh, Ankita, is the first and foremost thing we follow a basic principle of keeping things open, right? When I, when I say keeping things open, I we have decided to actually go ahead and build the platforms on open systems, open source. Right. and open open uh, uh, operating systems. It means, as soon as you say it, the platforms are open, it means we are not dependent on anybody else in the world. Right. Mm. right. That is the first philosophy what we follow. And when we actually build the platform on those open systems, we call it the triple O principle, we also follow the basic principles of having a high security, high scalable systems. Right. So the way, right. I, the, as we speak today, our platforms are very, very scalable. It has been benchmarked for 5,000 transactions per second. Okay. And, and of course, it will be like, you know, if you want to scale that to 10,000 TPS, it's very easy to do it because it's on horizontal scalable systems. So uh, recently, you have hired your leadership, uh, leadership team. Now, how is the growth looking like in the current leadership? Oh, fantastic question. I'm excited to answer this. Uh, so, Ankita, it's uh, as a as a founder of the company, right, we can take our company to some label. Right. And of course, it's time for us to also start getting into the next level of the growth, right? So okay. today we started this journey in 2015, 2016. Uh, we as a founding team has got this company to this level where we have our niche. We have also very, very strong customer base. But then we'll have to now look for future. Now the future can be we grew this company in India. Along with that, we'll also need to look on for a global expansion. While we do that, we also need to have a leadership team which can actually take this company to the next level. Right. 
and that's what the that's what we have done in last six months, right? Mm -hmm. Now, whatever leadership team we have, and it's a new leadership, it comes with a plenty of experiences in various fields, be it sales, be it operations, be it delivery, be it marketing, or be it you know running the organizations. One of the examples I would like to give is that one of our leader has three decades of experience in managing the BFSI, BFSI segment. Mm. Some of the leaders we have, you know, 20 years of sales experiences. So we are very, very excited to get those guys onto board mm. and expect FICOMers to go to multiple growth in next two to three years time. Rajesh ji, guide our audience through how is the, uh, you know, uh, pay five system is uh, digitizing the Bengaluru airport. Like how five commerce is helping enterprises with their, you know, uh, omni-channel payments offering. Okay, so Ankita, um, the, the first, say, first thing which I said as, you know, we are the only omni-channel payment platform in this country. And it's a truly omni-channel payment platform. Mm. We have done multiple omni-channel implementations in the last six years. However, Bangalore International Airport is something which is unique in nature. That would be a, probably one of the best use cases as far as the uh, airport ecosystem is concerned. Okay. I, I would really appreciate the efforts which has been put by Bangalore International Airport to come and in this country and try to do something unique, right? So when we started uh, the Bangalore International Journey, of course, we have uh, done this along with our banking partner, Kotak Bank. Mm -hmm. uh, you must have seen this as part of the news press where, you know, uh, the Bangalore International Airport has selected five commerce and Kotak as the payment partner for running their entire payment ecosystem. Right. Now, if you say go to any Bangalore International Airport, mm -hmm. now whenever you go to International Airport, you either can go on to the, the merchants, which is there as part of the airport's ecosystems, be it FNB, be it uh, uh, transit hotels, mm -hmm. uh, be it if you want to, you know, sit in the corner and of course Bangalore International Airport being the one of the most innovative airports in the in the in the world mm -hmm. uh, they came up with an omni channel as the payment mechanism for their travelers now either you sitting in Mumbai or in Delhi you can actually book your burger in KFC uh, at Bangalore Airport okay. which which I don't think so anybody could have dreamt of right, right? Mm -hmm. so be it be it you know doing a transaction when you are at the airport Mm -hmm. when you are trying to booking the transit hotel when you are sitting in Delhi or Bombay or whenever you are trying to do something uh, which is you know outside Bangalore airport which is the Bangalore international city right. which is like an you know right. area where there are a lot of happening uh, places around the airport everything is something which is managed by us from a payment ecosystem mm -hmm. so this can be a really a truly omni-channel use case which can be actually studied mm -hmm. and I can I can assure you that you know other airports are watching and they will definitely will follow the suit. Right. Okay. So uh, your previous tenure must have played an instrumental role in gaining the skills and knowledge, you know, uh, required to establish Phi Commerce as a benchmark in the country or in the industry. Uh, could you tell us more about that? Yeah, absolutely, uh, Ankita. Uh, so I started my career with a bank. Okay. So I'm I'm banker by profession uh, started. Okay. Of course, I spent... Uh, not much maybe six seven years in bank and after of course of course i have learned a lot as far as the banking professional is concerned of course i i was instrumental in getting certain very very critical uh, implementations in the bank because that time it, the uh, computerization was just coming up yeah. and of course i was part of that mm -hmm. after that actually i joined a company called electra card services mm -hmm. which was one of the very few startups in india mm -hmm. uh, we were, which were actually into the payment space in fact we were the first payments company in India who has actually built the payments platform from scratch. Okay. Otherwise, we are always dependent on the companies from West. Mm -hmm. So we were the first Indian company who actually built the platform starting from scratch and provided the platform across the world, starting from Southeast Asia to India to Africa to even Latin America. And part of the journey, we have actually learned how to build the payment ecosystem, right? And that's where actually it really helped us to do up from a product perspective, how do we build that? After that, I have spent some time with a company called Electra, Euronet, Euronet Worldwide, which is again multinational coming from Europe. Okay. There I have learned a lot in terms of customer expectations. So there I used to manage certain multinational customers. Uh, one of them is Standard Chartered Bank and Citibank. Mm -hmm. There actually we could actually understand the criticality of customer service. Mm -hmm. And that is something which are really helping me in terms of getting our customers the best 
services from Phi Commerce. Right, right, right. All right. So uh, has the proliferation of uh, fintech startup crowded the industry or is there scope for uh, innovation in the sector? Ankita, I think uh, the sky is the limit today. Right. You know? so, so you just talk about when you say tech, I mean, there are various techs. Fintech is one of them. Right, right. Uh, and I tell you what, I mean, from a government perspective, from a regulator perspective, fintech is becoming a very, very critical, very critical because... Mm-hmm. I mean, I have been, uh, I have been, you know, uh, having so much conversations with the regulators, Mm -hmm. the government bodies, Mm -hmm. and I have clearly seen that regulators are not going to keep it as simple as it looks like, because fintech is something which is touching the the funds, and funds are very critical, and and and, uh, the specifically the Reserve Bank of India is something which has actually started the fintech department to to actually regulate the fintech uh, ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Of course, we, uh, Phi Commerce actually act as both payment aggregate, which is the regulatory body. Right. Also, we also follow certain guidelines, which are FinTech, which has been defined by Reserve Bank of India. Mm-hmm. So when I say that, it is basically essential to understand that, you know, when regulator is coming on board and trying to regulate mm-hmm. or provide the guidelines onto the FinTech side, it means regulator understands that, you know, there are so much scope in terms of expanding the, the businesses using the fintech. Right. Now, anything which is related to touching the funds, the fintech can provide a solution for. Mm. Right. So I don't see it is saturated at all. Okay. There is a lot of scope. Okay. When as an organization, when you have a culture of an innovation, mm-hmm. I think you can always find your own place and you can actually grow business. Right. So I personally feel fintech is a way to go. And it will actually see a multifold growth as far as the ecosystem is concerned. And I can tell you one thing, Ankita, India is going to lead the world when it comes to the payments as well as fintech space. I believe that to be true. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes. So uh, what are your bu- uh, future plans with Phi Commerce? Like, uh, tell us a bit about the global expansion, your plans for global expansion. Yeah. So Ankita, uh, of course, India is our main um, homeland. Of course, we'll keep growing our business there. Uh, We have actually our own niche space. And of course, we'll grow multifold there. Along with that, we're also planning to start our own separate business lines. At this point, I have not to try to talk about this. But of course, we have plans to start that as far as India is concerned. However, global expansion is, which is already there on the cards. As we speak, last month, we have actually incorporated in Singapore. Okay. Love yeah, that. and we are in we are in actually hiring spree as far as the market international market is concerned. We are we are going to hire people in Southeast Asia. Mm-hmm. Our market focus is going to be Southeast Asia and Middle East to start with. Mm-hmm. Once we establish ourselves into these two markets, of course we'll go to the western part of the world. Right. But Ankita is going to be a focused global expansion for next couple of years, and you will see that happening. Okay, all the very best for that, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ankita. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us today and uh, sharing some wonderful insights. Now, no, uh, and the, on the ending note, I will ask you three very quick questions, uh, you know, which will be for our younger audiences. Okay. Sure. Okay. So what entrepreneurial advice would you like to give to our generation? Don't give up. Okay. Keep, keep, keep trying, keep trying till the time you become successful. So Mr. Rajesh, any thoughts for, you know, platforms like Mobile App Daily? I think you guys are doing great job. It's important uh, uh, initially by you guys. I mean, it's important for everybody to know what is happening in the tech space. And specifically, I would love uh, if you can do something more onto the payment space or a fintech space. That would be really helpful for audiences. Right, right. Let's hope for that sir, soon. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your valuable insights, uh, Mr. Rajesh. Uh, it was lovely having you here today and lovely having a conversation with you here today. Thank you, Ankita, for an opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you.